The ability to make drive partitions can come in handy. It's especially useful if you want to do things like install a second OS on the same system or if you want to separate your data on a single drive. So today I'll be showing you how to do that on Mac OS. Hello everyone, my name's Mike and here at Sabrum we love to make and talk tech. So if that's what you're into then make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can stay updated with all our future videos. So let's get into creating a partition on Mac OS. You can create a partition on Mac by using Disk Utility, which is a built-in utility on Mac OS. But before you begin this process, make sure to create a backup of your data or clone your data using a Cronus if you are using a Sabrina enclosure or drive. I'll leave a link down in the description below for you to use. When you are ready to partition your drive, press the command and space keys together and then type disk utility in the search box and then press enter. Once the disk utility application is open, select the drive that you want to partition on the left menu bar. There should be a partition icon at the top of the window, just select partition. Now click the plus sign below the circle to add another partition to this disk. The layout will immediately change to show the new partition. You can now change the partition size by either typing in the size manually or by dragging the little dot inside the circle. The size change may be limited by the data that you have already stored on your drive. After you've made the partition the size that you want, click on the new partition and type the name for it in the box labelled name. Make sure that the format selected is Mac OS X Extended. When you are done with setting the partition size and naming the new partition, click on the apply button to make these changes. If for whatever reason you want to change something or don't want to partition it at all, then click on the cancel button instead and restart the process. Now your drive has been partitioned into two. Since High Sierra, you can now create volumes, not just partitions, on your drive. A volume is essentially a partition, but macOS handles it slightly differently. But there are certain advantages of creating a volume instead of a partition. The way that macOS handles volumes differently is thanks to their new Apple file system, or APFS for short, which replaced their old file system, HF. S plus. The advancement of the new APFS system is that it handles files very differently. The benefit of a volume includes things like being able to share the same space among different volumes, which isn't possible with partitions since a partition space is allocated to a particular partition. So storage space is available to all the different volumes and only assigns a file when needed. Now let's get into creating a volume using Disk Utility. Open the Disk Utility application as I've shown you before. Now select the drop down menu beside the view button in the toolbar and choose show all devices. This will show all the volumes and containers within your disk. Find your drive and explore Expand the drive. Now click on the container in that drive and double check that it's in an APFS file system. You have to remember that multiple volumes only work with APFS file systems. For older file systems, you can only create partitions. Now you want to right click this and at the bottom of the pop up menu, you want to click add APFS volume. Here you can name the volume as well as select the type of APFS file system that you want. After you've done that, you can now set the storage minimum and limit for this volume by clicking size options. Volumes, unlike partitions, don't have a dedicated space allocated for them. Instead, what you do is set a storage limit on that particular volume so that it doesn't take up more space than what you've set. Volumes share the storage space with other volumes until that space is allocated a file. The reserve size makes sure that you have a minimum amount of storage space in that volume so that other volumes you have created don't end up eating into that volume that you have just created. The quota size is setting a limit on how much of that volume can take up in that particular storage space. Now now you can simply click add and your new volume will be added to your drive. Playing with storage spaces is always a risky business, so it's always a good idea to back up before you start any of these processes, however safe they might be. Having said that, creating partitions and volumes isn't as risky as it used to be. If you take the proper precautions and follow these steps 
carefully, you shouldn't face any problems. Creating partitions and volumes is a good idea as it allows you to create separate storage spaces so that you can allocate these to different family members or use them for different types of data. Anyway, I really hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did, then make sure to smash that like button and also don't forget to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can stay updated with all our future videos. Anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.